The Temporary Podcast is funded entirely by its fans. Want to help out? While listening to the show today, click our Amazon shopping link in the show notes and buy yourself something nice. You deserve it. Your purchases will help fund the show. <laughs> Hello, everybody. Hello. <laughs> Welcome to the, the podcast. We're, we're back. Um, we have a show. Finally, it's been how many weeks? Days? Two months. Months? Yeah. <laughs> I don't think so. Yeah, I th- yeah. We've been in a little bit of a coma. Just a tiny bit. Yeah, it's been about two months. There's no watch there. You're not even wearing a watch. You're a liar and a fraud. But we're back with the temporary podcast. What are we talking about this show, finally? E3 catch-up. NVIDIA. And getting back on track. We, we, we got some catching up to do with each other. I don't think... We haven't even talked to each other this past two months. Yeah. <laughs> we only talked to each other during, during uh, the podcast, so... That's all today, which is the 27th day of June 2013 on the Temporary Podcast. Go ahead, I guess. Go ahead. I don't know what I'm supposed to say, because nothing's highlighted. Go with bam What? Go with bam Well bam We're back! Hello! <laughs> I'm gonna include that. Go with bam Well bam <laughs> We're back! <laughs> and I'm including this, which is even more interesting. You're a strange person. Yeah, so welcome back to the podcast. We're, uh... It's been two months, like we said during the intro, and... We're sorry. We've been having lots of delays and busyness and laziness. Busyness. That's that's how I call laziness. I just say I'm busy with other. Oh my gosh, my chair is making squeaky noises on the table. I'm not farting. I. He's farting. Don't let him. Don't let him lie. <laughs> Lactose intolerant. Anyway. <laughs> <laughs> So yeah, we're gonna be talking about E3 today. Well, wow. like we we've we missed E3. Uh, yeah. We we don't really have much more to talk about other than E3, uh, but we do have a lot of things we want to kind of catch up with you guys about. Um, so during July, we're also going to be having some infrequencies. Yeah, July is gonna be a very busy month for us. <laughs> Both of like, like first of all, we're, we have the marathon, the Zoltathon. We're gonna talk about that at the end of the show, and then we have. Um, we're going to have still people inside our house the entire time. Yeah, for like a week or two after. Yeah, we're going to try to like do a podcast while they're here, maybe. Yeah. Get some guests. Oh. Just just have the temporary, not even podcast, just call it the temporary party. Yeah, the temporary <laughs> meeting. The, 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 the temporary, temporary board, board meeting. meeting. <laughs> 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 Instead of the done, da done, it should just have it be ba bum bum. Yeah. <laughs> Welcome to the temporary board meeting. <laughs> and then I'm going to play on con, so I'll be gone during that weekend. I'm not. And then we're gonna go to uh, the Zola Symphony. So it'll be like yeah. we'll try to get one or two out during July, and then yeah. we'll try to turn to normal during August. So yeah. I think I think we'll be able to get back on track in August. Yeah, maybe. By the way, I forgot to mention this to you before we go to the news desk. Um, uh, there was a picture of like one of the Game Informer editors, mm. um, and he took a picture of a lot of it, and they both were going like this. Because because apparently this became a thing, uh, yeah. and I didn't even realize the thing when we, to do. when when we when we were making a joke about the direct to you. I didn't realize it was going to become a thing, but it became a thing. Not not from us. We're hipsters. We're we're hipsters. Oh god, <laughs> I like that. I like that. We are we're hipsters. Oh god, we're hipsters. Why? I I ain't even know. But whatever. Well, now we can't be hipsters because we're hipsters. Frick. <laughs> 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 uh, I'm playing footsies down there. Sorry. Um, stay on your side of the table. We have this clear division. <laughs> um, anyway, it's time to go. Stop squeaking. I'm ch- news. <laughs> so E3. E3 happened at the beginning of this month. And everyone knows what went down with that. Let's no, talk no, about it. Well, actually, not, not everybody knows. I mean, we, we can... If you're on the internet, you know. <laughs> yeah! <laughs> <laughs> a 
little bit. Uh, so why don't we start off at the beginning of E3 when Microsoft had their conference. So before we get it, before we get into the face palm, let's talk about what they they showed before when they revealed their console. We actually did not have a temporary podcast during that. Right. So they revealed their console, and their entire show was very not games. Yeah. Like they they showed a few games during their original announcement. Um, they did show the box, unlike <laughs> Sony. The box. It, it's it's a box. It's an Xbox. It's a brick. Um, we didn't even know it was called the Xbox One. We haven't talked about that. No, yeah. Stupid. The Xbox One. I mean, we. I mean, this has already been hashed to death on the internet. Yeah. But I mean, let's beat a dead horse. We don't condone animal. Bring violence. forth a horse. We don't condone animal violence here at the temporary podcast. The horse was already dead. Exactly. So beating We're it. We're tenderizing the meat for cooking. <laughs> <laughs> so, the big thing that was announced shortly afterwards was DRM for the Xbox One was going to be quite insane. Can we name some of the things that they, 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 they announced? Uh, at E3? No, oh, like before, before about E3. The, about oh. the DRM. Um, it was uh, the always online, wasn't it? You have to check I'm in. Every, to think what happened before E3. You have to like, check in every 24 right. hours. Yeah, that was the um, the connect For, being always had to maintain that connection. You had to have the connect plugged in. I don't understand. You can why. disable features, but you can't disable unplug it. Disable features. It's like it's like why can't I just unplug it? What is the yeah? Issue what's stopping that? me from unplugging it? Like, and that that is something that hasn't changed uh, apparently. I don't, I, I don't know. I've never understood that. Like, what is what is their their thought process behind that? I don't know. Why do you have... I don't have a blanket. Oh. <laughs> Good enough. <laughs> Welcome to the temporary cuddle cast. Anyway. <laughs> so, um, what, what else did they have? The used games. You can trade... No. <laughs> no, no, no. You can trade them in. You could trade them in to approved retailers, and it would be uninstalled from your system. And I, I think it was like only a one-time thing, maybe. Yeah. Um, lending games is different no. because you can you can lend it to a game, but it was for like a day or like a week, and they had to pay for it. Yeah, you had to pay the lend games, which was what is the issue with going like, uh, Alex? Would you like to borrow a video game from me? Sure. Instead, you had to go into like settings or go onto friends list. Check things, pay money, wait for it to re-download. You couldn't just... And Sony made a joke about that at E3. We'll talk about that in a moment. <laughs> yeah. um, what, was there, wasn't there more restrictions? There, there was like more restrictions that people were upset about. I, I honestly don't know. Trading, lending... Um, TV! Oh yeah, they, 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 the Xbox One was going... Big on TV and TV-related features. We don't even have cable. I mean, basically, they they stuck Windows Media Center inside there. Yeah. Because I, I used They're to... running three operating systems in the Xbox One. Oh, yeah, yeah. We have Windows. We have games. We have... Oh, TV. TV. It's like, okay. Wonderful. I like, I like how the, the big feature about the Xbox One is you can watch TV on your TV... It's like input done. Yeah, <laughs> you, you it takes maybe two clicks on your TV remote. Instead, you have to go Xbox watch TV, and then if it doesn't work, Xbox watch TV, and then you have to go in and yeah. TV because it's probably not gonna recognize your voice. It's an E3 demo, you know. We're we're not gonna see it work like that. Yeah. And so um, they came to E3, mm -hmm. and what did they do first at their conference? Games. They actually showed games. Uh, do you remember any of them that you were particularly interested in? Not really, no. Project Spark. I didn't see that. Okay, so, you get your tablet, which, by the way, is not included. Your Windows tablet. You have to buy one of those, separate. Which is two, three hundred dollars. If only they included with the system. I wish the system would, would nice. do that sometime, yeah. you know, like... The Wii U? U? <laughs> Boom! <laughs> <laughs> It's like Nintendo was foreseeing something, or it actually had an idea about the gaming of the future. I know. Like, that's one thing I actually don't hear a lot about. It's like, people are like, 
Sony and Microsoft are pushing these tablets on people, and Nintendo's including one mm -hmm. with their system, and it's cheaper than the other two systems. Yeah. And so it's like, okay, we'll, we'll talk about Nintendo. And you can game more. with that laptop. Like, with, with analog but, but yeah, with buttons. Project Spark, you take your tablet and you can like draw, like you can build worlds. It's, it's kind of like really neat. Uh, it's yeah. uh, and like adventure in them. Oh, that's what that was. It's really cool. I, 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 that was the only game I was genuinely interested in at the conference. Is it worth $500? By the way, it cost $500, the Xbox One. 500 US dollars, and also 500 euros, and British pounds, which is... No, 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 the British pounds is 450 That's still over 500 US dollars. Yeah, yeah, it's, yeah, still. So the exchange rate is not what they thought it was. But, you know, even numbers, that's the way they go for it. And if they can make more money, they're going to make more money. They're not going to undersell it. That's that's what I was seeing a lot of with, with Xbox is money, 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 money. Yeah, because you, you, you have to subscribe to Xbox Live. So it's like you have to buy your system and the subscription to even use it. Because remember, online costs money. Uh, I just want to play games. I just... Can I, have a, can I borrow a game from you to play on my system, Alex? Uh, uh, I just want to play can, a game. Can I, can I borrow a game? I can now play a game. I just put it inside my Nintendo 64, and we're ready to go. <laughs> Nailed it! <laughs> <laughs> I totally put it right inside the system. Don't even ask questions. It's got two slots. It's modified. I want that system. Just click. Screw the Xbox One. Let's make an N64 two slots in it. Money! <laughs> 599 US dollars. And so, after they show their games at E3, which there, there are some games that appeal to certain, you know, people, um, but not to all people, you know. There, 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 is, there is one thing that, that Xbox did that I kind of want to bring up. The, um, when the girl was playing. Oh, yeah. They made a very, very inappropriate, almost dark joke. Right. And... I'm not okay with that. I, like, a lot of people. Most I, of the stuff is scripted, so I like almost. I really hope that wasn't scripted. Yeah, just just the just the way it, like it came out. I don't think he meant it to be like that, or even the scriptwriters meant it to be like that. But if they did, then shame on them. Shame on. Yeah, them. Go watch the Xbox conference uh, at E3 when they had the girl come out and she was playing a. Uh, I want to say some don't... fighting game. Oh, was it? Was it? Um. Was it? Uh, Killer Instinct. Killer Instinct, correct? Yeah. yeah. Which they haven't made one in like twenty years. Yeah, and the, the and it's like okay, so Rare's going to make the game because Rare, you know, is owned by Microsoft, and so Rare hasn't had a chance to make one of the really good, you know, series in a long time, like Banjo Kazooie. Yeah, they they haven't had a chance. To, like they they did all these old games that were like really good, and so they've been stuck on the uh, the the train of Connect Sports, I believe, is what they've been doing. Ew. And so we think Rare, Rare, you're going to make Killer Instinct for realsies. It's yeah. not developed by them. It's developed mainly by a company that has had, like, two other games. Yeah. And it, it's overall a sad, sad story. So it's probably not going to be that good. <sighs> I mean, we'll, we'll see. I mean, I don't think it's going to sell. Like, no, I'm, system. Not, I'm, I'm not going to get an Xbox. Uh, I won't see. But. Right. It, so, I mean, it's... So following this conference, <laughs> we, we have, like... We have everybody in the world saying... You didn't even mention the elephant in the room. Yeah. The the fact that you can show me all these games, but if I can't connect to the in internet every every twenty four hours, what, what's going to happen? And we've had some really like a lot of stuff happen, like uh, Don Matrick, you know the you know the Microsoft guy. Mm. That, that's what he does. Um, Don Don Matrick, he he like went on with interviews and was saying all this stuff. Like, well, if you want to play offline, offline. Get a we, ha we have a system for that. It's called the 360. And it's, like, and it's just like, oh. But why would you tell me about all these cool games if I can't uh. play them? It's like, what the heck? Uh. So that's shooting himself in the foot. Now, what did you, like a, a bazooka? <laughs> did you watch the Angry Joe video where he interviewed... Um, I can't say I did. I forget what the guy's name is. Uh, but he was basically talking to this Microsoft guy mm. about the Xbox One. Right. And they're both very heated people. And I'll have to show you this video afterwards. And basically Angry Joe was going all about, like, going right to him about all the issues. Like, saying, this is a problem. Gamers have right, an issue yeah. with this. What is your response to this? The guy was almost, like, avoiding questions in, in some cases. In other cases, he was just 
trying to push it, and like there was a point where he actually took the microphone from him, and like and like it, it got really heated, and like it was just, oh, it, it was very like crazy about how he was basically he said essentially to him, the Xbox One was built for an always online connection. We can't just flip off the DRM with a switch. Yeah, we can't just flip a switch. And now we are at the point today where Microsoft has made an announcement. Mr. Don Matrick, Mr. <laughs> makes a post on the Xbox blog saying that they have flipped the switch, <laughs> which they could not do one week ago. The Xbox pancake, it's flipped a flappity. <laughs> okay. So, uh, this has been lovingly called the Xbox 180. The 180. They have literally, the they have literally said, you know, for a long time, this is a, this is a necessary thing. This is a good thing. We are really enjoying this, and it's going to be the really cool part of the system. Never mind. We think that we should actually have no online requirements. You should be able to trade and lend your games all the time. You should be able to do whatever you want with your games. It it's too late. <laughs> I mean, I mean, I don't know if it's too late. I think that this they've was already, they've already had two conferences saying that, yeah they've, they've and kind then of they shot make a blog post. It's like oh wait wait wait, wait no we were kidding pretty much. I mean, it, they, they kind of shot themselves in the foot with that a bit, and I think it is largely due to the outcry of people, and I'm really glad that the gamers have, you know, they've won something. Yeah. Uh, this, is, this is very similar to um, how Operation Rainfall, the push for the release of Pandora's, mm -hmm. uh, Pan, Pandora's Tower? Pandora's Tower, The Last Story, and Xenoblade Chronicles on mm -hmm. the Wii. Right. Like, those were games that were only coming out in Japan. The gamers rallied, and those games, all three of them, coming out. are out in America. Right. So it's like that was success, and I feel the similar sense of accomplishment that they we were able to convince Xbox to do this. <laughs> the power of Reddit. <laughs> That's not to say that Xbox can't you know re put it in sometime. So obviously they can flip the switch. I, I, I'm honestly expecting that to happen. I, I don't think I'm expecting it to happen just because they they probably learned their lesson at this point. I don't want an Xbox One though because they they said five hundred dollars. They want five hundred dollars for it, and. Why? I don't have $500 to spend on Project Spark, which was the only game that genuinely <laughs> caught my interest during the conference. Yeah. I just don't have that type of money. No. Keep watching the podcast. Maybe I will, and maybe we can, like, I don't know, get it by an Xbox One and smash it. The Annihilation Show come back <laughs> with an Xbox <laughs> One. <laughs> Some people say you can't play an Xbox One without an online connection. We found a way you can still have fun with an Xbox One without an <laughs> online connection. <laughs> well, there you have it, folks. The Xbox One, still fun without an online connection. <laughs> we flipped the switch. <laughs> From unfun to fun. Just uh. like that. Uh, so, opinions after the dust is settling about that. Are you going to buy an Xbox One? Nope. Am I going to buy an Xbox One? Exactly. I'm, I'm, I'm disappointed with Microsoft and the way they've conducted their business. Um, Microsoft has made me very sad over the recent times. Windows 8 has, ooh, uh, that was that was a peanut I ate, a peanut I ate earlier. It's like had like a, a peanut particle. It's like come on, it's like, oh. it's like um, anyway. Uh, <laughs> Microsoft has disappointed me recently. Windows 8, I have no interest in. I like Windows 8. I hated it at first, and then Garrett let me borrow uh, Wheatley. Which had Windows 8 and uh, Windows 7 as a dual boot, and I would always start it with Windows 8 because I just. What, what are the advantages over Windows 8 over Windows 7 that makes it better? I'm not saying I'm not. The, I I understand. I, I, would, they, I would have to sit down and chew because I can't really describe it. I mean, but, the, to me, the, the, they are equal. In yeah, the, I mean, there's a. Uh, I see no reason for me to go and buy Windows 8. Right. Yeah, I would I'm buy fine. It, but yeah, I'm. If fine. Somebody just gave me. Exactly. Hey, here's free Windows 8. I'd be like. Thank you. I'll use it. Exactly, but that's the problem. I wouldn't buy it. But yeah, it's just like probably I wouldn't buy an Xbox One, but if somebody wants to give me one, sure. I'll take an Xbox One. I don't know what I'll do with it, but I'll have them for free. Annihilated. Yeah, blow it up. Um, Sell it on eBay. Just like I'll do with a Windows 8 copy. I'm fine with Windows 7 right over there. Um, so that disappointed me. Skype has been, is which is owned by Microsoft, has really? been disappointing me. Uh, um, apparently there, there's ways to like... Uh, Steal a user's account with their email address and giving a couple of contacts to Skype support just by saying like this. And like, I lost my password and I here's my email and I I've talked oh, to geez. Joe, Bob, and Smithy and they'll, they'll be like Smitty. and they'll be like oh well you know this information you're obviously the person and people's accounts have been stolen like that and hijacked and for me who I use Skype 
I'm in like 10 Skype chats, which yeah. are very important. I mean, they're going right now. In fact, I have Skype bleep. Who's that from? Crazy. Oh, he probably wants to play with the Wind Waker. Not right now. Oh, race. Yeah, that's a race. Um, After the podcast. So, yeah, it's... Microsoft has disappointed me. Dropping the ball, Microsoft. Now let's let's talk Sony, which uh, put on their conference later. Oh. Sony comes out looking really good uh, out of the conference, but let, let, let's say this. Okay, the PS4 has been revealed. What games do we honestly want from them? Uh, the Division. Okay. Um, trying to think of names here. Um, I want to get um. Shoot, the, the Ubisoft's game that's been was announced last year at E3. Watch Dogs. Watch Dogs. I want to get that for the PS4. Um, the new Assassin's Creed coming out. Um, oh, what else? There was a lot, but I can't really remember names. Like, Let's, let's talk about console exclusives, though. Okay. Um, i trying to think of console exclusives for the Xbox. Or the, not the Xbox, the PS4. Kingdom Hearts is not a, a, an exclusive. No, but I I, w- I would like to get Kingdom Hearts four or three. Um, I never played two. I played one, played through it all. I didn't play any of the other versions. Like what was it, three hundred sixty eight days over two or whatever. Mm-hmm. That title even confuses me. I never played that. I never played Chain of Memories. All right, let's not talk about exclusive now. Des- yeah. Destiny is gonna be coming to it. I'm not. De- in- yes, Destiny. I'm not interested. In I really want to get Destiny. It looks pretty cool. Well, you could that, in that case, you would say you were interested in that game for Xbox One then. No. Well, it's the same game. I'd rather get it on the PS4. But it's the same game. But I don't want to get an Xbox One. Fair enough. But I mean, <laughs> but I mean, when we were talking about Xbox One games, you didn't mention Destiny. That's just not an exclusive to Xbox. That's why. Well, it's not an exclusive PS4 either. True. <laughs> so you should have mentioned but it. But I knew it was coming out on the PS4. Same with Final Fantasy 15. It's coming out yeah. on both. Kingdom Hearts coming out on both. Yeah. Um, Elder Scrolls Online is coming to both. Yeah. I already play enough MMOs. <laughs> Watch Dogs coming out on both. It's also coming out on the Wii U, where, it was, where I'll probably buy it. Yeah. Um, Watch Dogs looks good. <sighs> Speaking of Watch Dogs, I have a quick rant. Oh, boy. I'm going to review the Watch Dogs for the Wii U right now. Oh, boy. I've already played the game in the future, <laughs> and I will now review it. I can see the reviews now. Watch Dogs on Wii U is a pretty decent port. It suffers from massive frame rate drops at random points inside the game, as well as the map system is much better. It's clearly the lesser version of the game, which I'd prefer to play on the PS4. I give it 8.5 out of 10. There you go. <laughs> well said. That's what it's going to be. I'm just saying. Um, so, uh, on the PS4, I believe, um, I'm, I, 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 lately I've been into my PS3. Like After E3, I actually generally got really into Sony for some reason, because I've been a bit of fanboy for some time, but uh, following that, I bought Tomb Raider and The Last of Us oh. on the PS4. We'll, we'll, let's not talk about The Last of Us, because oh. some people haven't played it, even though it's a really good game so far. Such a good game. Um, so, I, I'm really, I'm putting my stock in Sony as well. Yeah. Um, I can't say there are many games that I'm like truly, like, really excited for on the PS4, but there are a lot of games that are coming to many systems that I'm definitely interested in, so yeah. I think a PS4 would be a good Investment, especially because it's at a one hundred dollars cheaper than the Xbox One, three ninety nine price tag. I still think that's expensive, and it's going to take me some time. It's not. I'm not going to be a launch day buyer, most no, likely. Probably not. Um, but I, I think it's something that I'll get in time. I was a day one uh, Wii U owner. Yeah. <laughs> um, because three fifty that 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 that's also very close to the three ninety nine. But um, I don't know. I don't know. We'll, we'll see. Yeah. Depends on how much you guys like the podcast, I suppose. <laughs> Although I did know, I have noticed um, the last last uh, system release, 360 was a hundred bucks or like two hundred bucks cheaper than the PS3. Five hundred ninety nine US dollar. Yeah, mm-hmm. and now the roles have reversed. <laughs> Xbox is making the same mistake. I mean, at the same time though, look which system is it, uh, we like right now. Like which one's Sarah living in the PS3, PS3. which was five hundred ninety nine at the beginning. Right. So. But- People are, like, I, I see a lot of people on the internet right now going, console war is over, Sony wins, thank you for playing. The, the console war hasn't started yet. Yeah. I mean, all this pre-guff, it's... Advertisement. It, we're just, we're, we're like, this is right now the point where Microsoft is saying, oh crap, we made him a boo-boo, let's try to fix it, and 
Maybe they just noticed. <laughs> Where did it come from? I don't know. Not for me. It's, it's not for my phone. Was it from you? Something's about to break. But that was a pretty noise, not a deathly noise. Um. Anyway, let's talk about Nintendo. Oh, yeah. So Nintendo did their E3 Nintendo Direct on the fo- morning following all the big conferences, and... Because screw a big conference, we just want to do Direct. Well, uh, the first thing that I want to talk about is Retro. What did you expect them to bring? I was really hoping for another Metroid. Okay. Because I know the Prime series is probably one of my favorite series of games ever mm-hmm. ever made. Um, and I was kind of disappointed to see that that's not what it was. Retro Studios has been working on something for quite a while now, and we, we were was actually going to be a real last E3, but that Fils May said, let's let it stew a little bit, but let's give it another year. And so Retro Studios this time comes with their project, and it's a new series, a new game inside the Donkey Kong, the Donkey Kong Country series, which uh, they worked on the first one. And Alex is going, but I'm excited to see a new Donkey Kong game, but I'm I'm disappointed that's what Retro Studios was working on. That's what we've been getting hyped for. Yeah. I mean, laundry's done. Um, <laughs> I don't know if you guys heard that. Uh, I've never been a huge fan of Donkey Kong to begin with. Right. And, I don't know, I'm just, I'm really disappointed in that. I mean, yeah, it was kind of bad that the Retro Studios got us all hyped up for a series that they've already done. Because they've been talking about, this is a series that people have been wa- wanting us to work on for some time now. Some time now? You count that as since the last game released, like in 2000 and... Nothing. No, it was 10. 10? Three so, years ago? Two years ago? That, that's not much of a long time. Like I, I wanted them to... I was hoping for, personally, a Star Fox. I, I, thought, Ooh, yeah. I, I thought that if Nintendo gave retro Star Fox, we would see the return of, of Star Fox back into the really, really good light that it used to be in. Yes. But we, we didn't get that. So, so we got Donkey Kong. I'm, I'm excited for, for Tropical Freeze. Um, mm. I'll probably get it because I love Donkey Kong Country. Um, but it, it was a bit of a disappointment. Yeah. They also uh, had the Wind Waker HD. Craig Asm. Yes. It, it, like, seeing it in motion, a lot of people are getting on it about bloom. <laughs> like, all the bloom effects. And it's like, you guys aren't playing this game right now inside your living room. You're watching the trailer. Yeah. And it's obvious, it's, it's easy to overanalyze. I think it's going to play very well. Right. Um, they've made some key changes to the gameplay. If you played the Wind Waker, you know how it is. You sail across it. They've added fast sailing. You're going to unlock that at some point in the game where you're going to be able to like hold down A and go... And the King Red Lines is going to move much faster. I think that's a welcome addition. Um, they also have changed the Tingle Tuner item, which you use to like summon items like healing and magic and get all this right. stuff like right on your Game Boy Advance, connect to your GameCube. We can't connect the Game Boy Advance to the GameCube. We can connect the 3DS, but let's not talk about that. Uh, instead, <laughs> let's let us add... A bottle. The tingle bottle. And you can write messages and throw it in the ocean. And you'll get other messages from other people. Meverse. So no tingle tuner? No tingle tuner. What does that mean for speedruns? We, we're not talking about speedruns. Because the speedrun community is all fluffed up about the Wind Waker HD. And the game's not even out yet, so they just all need to shut up. <laughs> I've heard a lot of people have tried speedrun stuff, even on the E3 floor. Right, yeah. Not on E3 floor, but uh, they, they they did demos of it at Best Buy. Really? I thought there was somebody at E3 that did, did uh, a Super Swim, or... At the Best Buy demos of oh, the game, okay. following E3. Um, and overall, the One Way Crate HD is looking really good. I'm really enjoying playing it. Whether or not it's speedrunnable, that's irrelevant to me yeah. right now. Uh, if it's not speedrunnable, then we still have the Wind Waker. It's right. fine. Um... What other games did they have? They had Bayonetta 2. They showed that off. <laughs> Looking good. Looking Bayonetta. good. Oh, yeah. Uh, <laughs> that's all you can say. It's just, mm, Bayonetta looks good. Oh, I, don't know, yeah. I don't even know what the games have happened. Mm. Yeah. <laughs> um, Swords. They had X, uh, which was a, a, a something that's in development. You remember with the running around with the yeah. dinosaurs yeah. and stuff? That looks really good. I thought it was another Monster Hunter, actually. <laughs> no, no, but I, I, I have no idea what, what it is. I'm just really excited for it. Um, I'm not sure. It looks pretty cool. Yeah, I don't know if it's a, it's a it's one of those insta buy, but it's something that I'm really glad that Nintendo is having coming to their system yeah. because I, I'm definitely a Nintendo guy who's like I'm always looking for the better of the company. Nintendo. Um, was there anything else that that really interests you? Not really. There wasn't really much in the in the uh, Nintendo Direct that 
we, we got Super Mario 3D World. Oh, the new Smash Brothers. Oh, did we forget about Yeah, that? we forgot about the new Smash Brothers. I'm a dummy. Mega Man! I'm so happy about that. They're like, the entire internet's like freaking out about Mega Man. I'm like, okay, cool. No, they're freaking out about Villager. No, we have Villager. <laughs> Animal Crossing Villager. I'm, I'm really excited to see. Like, like I, Pots will finally get the revenge on Link. I'm very excited about the new characters, uh, as well as Wii Fit Trainer. <laughs> I don't know what they're gonna do with that. It's Apparently, she looks like really nimble and like like uh, even like e- even better Zero Suit Samus. So that's actually kind of hype, to be honest. I'm just excited for Mega Man. Like I, I I'm really happy it's old school Mega Man. Not, I mean, I, it would be cool to see Mega Man X, like the more later series, right? You know, where he's like more mature and like you know mm-hmm. just built for killing. Mm-hmm. But it's it's old school cute Mega Man, like. And with all s- of his upgrades and powers. And, and like, did you like, see, like, the like, like the comparison of the animations that yeah, they did? Yeah, it's, like, it's almost spot on. Nintendo is bringing back Mega Man, which yeah. I'm, s- I, I, like, I, I've not played much Mega Man, but I do know that the series, like, the series has a lot of fans that have been very disappointed over the past few years. Yeah. Like, Capcom has dropped the ball. They've let go of the guy who has, like, who created Mega Man. They got rid of him. So Mega Man's now just owned by Capcom and not by the guy who made Mega Man. Yeah. And so it's like, we thought, Mega Man's dead. Everybody was calling it, like, GG. And then Nintendo comes out of nowhere and it's like, we did Mega Man right. Yeah. And I would be perfectly fine if Capcom said, Nintendo, you can have Mega Man. I think Nintendo would do a good job at incorporating Mega Man as a Nintendo character. I don't see that happening. I kind of want to see another Battle Network game. Oh, I have no opinions, but okay. I-, I loved the Battle Network series. I played it, you know, I was growing up on the bus, I was playing on my Game Boy mm-hmm. Advance. It was a really cool take on the, the, the Mega Man universe. It's completely different than, you know, right. Dr. Not Dr. Wily. Um, yeah, Dr. Wily. Correct. Uh, and, and, and all that. It's completely different storyline and everything, but it's still Mega Man. Completely different gameplay. Mm-hmm. New engines and everything. It had, like, an RPG style right. like, to it. And I really like that. Like, I would like to see that on a 3DS, what they would do on a 3DS with that. I think that would that's, be neat. That's just kind of a side comment. I just it's all about it. seeing if Mega Man can make a comeback right yeah. now. Yeah, <laughs> I um, think he could. I just, I think I think that Capcom needs to be smart and give it to the people. Like Nintendo trusted Capcom with creating Zelda games. They create they don't cringe. They create Oracle Season Ages. I know, but still, Nintendo trusted them with that even after the entire um, Phillips fiasco. Like, <laughs> if Nintendo had to be scared to death. Of handing over Zelda to somebody. Like, they gave Zelda to Phillips, and they gave one to Veritas and one to, like, their, their own, like, designers, and they come out with Wanda Gamma Face of Evil and Zelda's Adventure, and these games are almost unplayable, and it's like, we just gave Zelda to these people. And re- now, nowadays, they don't even recognize those games even no, exist. No, they never mention them. They, like, it, they don't exist. Uh, even though they are Zelda games. Yeah. They don't exist inside Nintendo's eyes, but they, it's like they, Skypathon. So it happened. For sure. We never do mention it. But it we don't talk exist. about it. Except now, shut up. Um, you, you, you brought it up. And so Nintendo's scared to death of handing over Zelda at this point, And they have the guts to give it to Capcom. And Capcom does good. They I mean, this is back in the heyday when Capcom was actually good. Capcom is still good. Uh, yeah. Not as not as much. They, they've really come downhill, from, in my opinion. Okay, okay. But, but still. They, like they, back they, in like the, the, the Super Nintendo era. Well, I mean, but what I'm saying, though, is that Nintendo trusted Capcom with, with Zelda at, at that time, and so I think it would be really cool if Capcom could trust Nintendo with Mega Man now as, like, a way of repaying them. Like, you, you let us borrow Zelda, your dearest fan franchise. Here, you can borrow Mega Man, our dearest franchise. Like, like whether or not Capcom recognized or not, you know, Mega Man, is, they're, like, they're what they are. Yeah. They have Street Fighter, which is really, like, one of their, like, it's like Mega Man and Street Fighter. The, those two like, yeah. are Capcom's, like, prime jewels that have gone back so long that they don't want to, like... Just... How many Street Fighter games have been made? A lot. I'm trying to think of how many Mega Man games have been made. A lot. So there's Mega Man... The, the whole Mega Man series, Mega Man 10 series, which has lasted, like, 12 games. You mean X. Or Mega Man X, rather. Um, the Battle Network series, which has six different, like, tiers to it, but each tier has two games in it. Right. I think, well, I think at four it splits, or maybe, I don't mm-hmm. know. And then you have some some Mega Man ports, like GameCube, whatever. There was an actual really bad Mega Man game I played a while ago. I got it for the GameCube, and I thought it was going to be like Battle Network, almost. But it wasn't. What was it called? I honestly don't remember, but it was, like, terrible, like, Japanese voice acting. 
and the, the the mechanics of the game were terrible. Like it was a side scroller for a while, which you know old school, but it was on a GameCube and it was really well done, horribly done. Oh. And then the boss battle was 3D and it was just like I didn't know what to do. They didn't explain it in the game and it was first level and I was like I took it back to GameStop. I was like I want my money back. <laughs> and they're like. So Smash Brothers is pretty hype. Yeah. Getting back to our point. <laughs> Smash Brothers is pretty hype. We got some new characters. The game looks excellent. There's going to be a 3DS version for your I, mobile. I actually can't wait to see what other characters they release. If they release any more. They're going to. I, they always I know that they, yeah, they will. I, I'm curious to see what else they bring. Like, what, what more surprises can they bring? Like, well, well, let's theorize what they can bring. Well, let's talk about the Zelda series, because every oh, Zelda yeah. has had has, has had a, a, a Brawl, or every Smash Bros. had a new character. Originally, they had Link, and that was it. Yeah. They, they later brought in... They brought in Zelda. They brought in Young Link and Ganondorf. Right. And then, then for this next for for Toon Brawl, Link. they 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 brought in Toon Link, ditched Young Link, mm-hmm. and of course we had Sheik, of course, but that was right, inside yeah. melee. What like people are saying Girahim, and I honestly do not see them bringing no, Girahim. I... Girahim was very much appreciating Skyward Sword, but at the time that Brawl comes out, we're going to be on the heels of a new Zelda game. Yeah. With a new villain. Girahim's probably not even going to be inside that game. He's yeah. going to be out of there. Right. They, they were saying Demise. At the same time, he's also going to be pushed right. out well, of the way. It, it, Demise would kind of be in the same place as Ganondorf in terms of, like, mechanics, I would think. D- Demise is Ganondorf. Well, yeah. Well, Ganondorf but, is Demise, as it were. Um, but, like, just trying to picture it in Smash Brothers, you know, I, can, I imagine Demise being slow and very powerful, like Ganondorf is. Are you, are you kidding me? Demise was freaking fast. You see how big Demise is going to... <laughs> yeah, but he still was, like, I know, around. but I'm thinking, I'm thinking Smash Brothers mechanics. Right. He would probably be very slow and very powerful. Right. And there was a joke. Uh, what was it? The Groose is loose. Oh, God. Bring Groose in. Uh, that's not going to happen. No. He might come in as an assist trophy and maybe use the Groosinator or something. Like, and I like come in and like go and shoot a shoot a bomb. I think that'd be cool, but yeah, I maybe. don't see Groose becoming a no. character. No. Um, I honestly don't know what Zelda characters they would honestly Vati. bring. I mean, Vadi has a chance because Vadi has been in more Zelda games, like almost as many Zelda games as Ganondorf. Right. Vadi would be uh, cool, but, but I, I don't know if the, I don't know if I could picture another villain being in. Smash Brothers. Well, we have Zelda and Link, and of course the the usually uh, the alternate Toon Link. Um, I Bunch personally see I see Toon Link staying inside this one, mm. um, and like with the Wind Waker HD remake, right, like, like uh, the yeah. model of him. I think that they'll probably do that. We'll probably see the Link that from Skyward Sword. Mm-hmm. Um, well, like even from the trailer, like the comparisons from yeah. Oh from yeah, we've Brawl. already seen that Link. Yeah, right. the, the Brawl Link and then the Link from the trailer, like right. just the side by side comparison of. Oh. There's a lot more Skyward Sword elements of that Link right. inside him. It just, just the details. Basically. Right. So, but as for a new Zelda character inside Brawl, or, or, or rather Super Smash Brothers for Wii U and 3DS? I honestly don't know if there would be one. I, I, I think that they're going to want to, but they're not going to. I would like to see Majora Link. What? Fierce DD, you mean? No, not, no, just, just like a young Link from Majora's Mask, but have, be able to use the masks. Oh. Kind of like, That'd you know, be like back Pokemon Link for melee. That's true. Bring uh, back like Pokemon, like Pokemon Trainer. Mm-hmm. Like you have the three different fighting styles. I think that'd be really cool, but I don't think them actually doing it unless they remove Toon Link. Project M, get on it. <laughs> I mean, because it, it, they would like they're not going to have Link, Toon Link, Young Link. Right. Yeah. I don't see them ever doing that. That that that's too many links. Um, <laughs> too many links. Uh I, I honestly, I, I can't really picture what they would bring in. It's hard to say. Maybe, maybe a character from Chrono Trigger? The, the closest thing I could actually think would, that's a, been a long time running character inside the Zelda series mm-hmm. that actually has some sort of fighting style that we've seen now, thanks to Skyward Sword, would be Impa. Ooh. Impas have been inside the Zelda series since... Um, Mm. Like for like the longest, longest time, like back since the originals, like she was inside the backstory to Zelda One. Mm-hmm. Um, so Impa's been there the entire time, um, and we saw her inside Skyward Sword. Like she like was like defending Zelda against Girahim, like like making this big old bubble. Right, but she's a she's a Sheikah, isn't she? She's a Sheikah. So Sheik. Well, no, Sheik isn't a Sheikah. But no, but I I I don't think th- I I I could I could see Impa playing inside a different style using more ancient Sheikah magic than. Sheik, maybe I don't know. Or maybe even get rid of Sheik and just have Zelda instead. Oh, I mean, if you think Impa. about it, we already have four Zelda characters. You don't yeah. think they're gonna add a fifth one? I think it's possible because people get so hyped about Zelda characters. 
I don't know. I, I honestly don't know what to picture for extra characters. Like, Mega Man came out of nowhere. I did not see that coming. Right. Animal Crossing? Who would have thought that? Right. And uh, Wii Fit Trainer? What? <laughs> Nintendo, what are you getting? Like... What, what, more, what more things could you, do you think they could just do to blow your mind, then? Make your own me character. I mean, what what series have has Nintendo been pushing lately? They've been pushing a lot of Donkey Kong. I, I could... I'm I'm seeing Donkey Kong and Donkey and Diddy already. I think Dixie is gonna probably come back because because nah, they maybe. they're pushing Dixie a lot with uh, um Tropical Freeze. Uh-huh. And so I I think that seeing Dixie is definitely a possibility. I'm so happy by the way Dixie is back because <sighs> she was my favorite back in the day, <laughs> and I thought she was dead. I was like they they had Tiny uh, Kong inside mm, yeah. Donkey Kong 64, which is basically Dixie, and I was like okay see see you later Dixie. Thank you for playing so much yeah. inside my history. And then she comes back. I'm like okay, like a phoenix rising from the ashes. Right. <laughs> I think that they're they're giving away like a lot of their like really big like surprise here at E3. I don't think we're gonna see as monumental. <gasps> we're gonna see more of. I could be oh, surprised. Yeah, I remember like with Brawl coming out, the characters released. Mm-hmm. Like a lot of the like what was after, such as I think Snake wasn't it? No, Snake and Sonic were both announced inside the. Um, were they inside the trailer? Yeah. Okay, I wasn't sure. Wario was announced inside that trailer. People weren't expecting him. Yeah. Okay, I think we need to move on. I don't we've know, we've yeah. been talking forever about Super Smash Bros. We could talk about that all day. <laughs> I think we need to talk about. Uh, oh, by the way, Mario Kart Eight that looks pretty cool. Yeah, uh, it's just Mario another Ma- element. And Mario Kart's a classic. By the way, I, I'd like to mention that something that, that Iwata said was the Wii was struggling at first too, and now it's the best selling. Well, games we, and do you know what the Wii did that the put that got it back on top? Hmm. Super Smash Brothers. Mario Kart, Wii Fit. Yeah. That blew up the Wii. Yeah. So what are they planning for, for the Wii right now? Smash Brothers, Mario Kart, Wii Fit. They have Wii Fit U coming. Nice. By the way, there's something called Wii Party U. I have no idea what it is. Let's move on to NVIDIA cards. <laughs> um, so let's talk about NVIDIA and like, the graphics cards. Uh, this is unrelated to E3. We're moving on completely. Yeah. Transition. Um and they've come out with their 700 series recently. Um, I have a 580, so I've skipped the 600 series. Um, and I really want a 700 card, because do you know why? what I want to do? Hmm. I, I don't I don't want to have two 580s in my system. Screw that. Just give me a 700. Stick that freaking thing in and... Four monitors. What would you do with four monitors? Everything! I, I I could barely use three. Like, I wouldn't really know what to do with three. Like, half the time, I don't even know what to do with two. Like, I either have Skype or Winamp in the side end, and then I have whatever on my main screen. Like I know, but you don't like... When I do live streams, I have, like, true. things here, I have things here, here. I, I like, stack things. Like, I, like, make little pockets and stuff. It's, and I need more space. So having a 700 series card... The 700 series is, like, more optimized than the 600. Um, like, they're they're faster, they're better... Um, they're they're more powerful, but they use less power consumption, which I think is really cool. That's interesting. Well, like they're more powerful, but they use less power. Like right. they they've been smart about how they like handle like graphics processing, and I think that's really cool that Nvidia is doing that instead of just keep on adding more power, more power, more power requirement. Right. They're they're they're, they're, they're making it more powerful, but requiring less power. Right. To do so. Hmm. When you have lemons, you yeah. make lemonade, and when you have many lemons. We try to make condensed lemonade. That was horrible. Oh, I don't even know. So, so what what graphics card do you have? Um, I have an ATI Radeon HD. I want to say it's the seventy seven fifty or the seventy. Can you turn on the air conditioner? I'm dying. Yeah, I honestly don't know. Like, I honestly don't know what exact card it is. Um. It's in the seven the seven thousand series. Hi. Cool. If we get up again. Thank you. Sorry, I'm melting. But yeah, it's it's the it's in the it, the uh, Radeon seven thousand series, the HD series. It's tiny compared to like all the Nvidia cards. It's I, I'm amazed at how small this thing is. Mm-hmm. But it's powerful. It does what I need. I'm a fan of computers. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, right now I have... I'm taking this off. I'm, like, I'm steaming right now. <laughs> it's like 80 or some degrees, almost 90, I think, actually, outside. Really? Yeah. Wow. It's, it's, it's like... It, I, I've not... We actually, are in I've, summertime. I've man. actually not been outside all day. It's so crazy. I no well, I don't know either. I just listen to my phone, which tells me the temperature on the home screen. 
Does it tell you? Goes to oh wait weather, Duh. weather Google weather. Eighty six. Yeah, it's almost ninety out there. Oof. <laughs> so and, and it's so, like it's like eight o'clock at night too. Is it? What the hell? <laughs> I don't even know what time it is. Um. So yeah, overall with like um computers, like I I love my I I I'm I'm a guy who's like going like the expensive route, but because mm-hmm. I. But I know it's worth it. Right. Like I go Intel, Intel processor. I go Nvidia graphics card. While you're the more alternative guy, right. the, the I've, ATI I've an, crew. I've, yeah, I have an uh, AMD Phenom two quad core. The AMD, yeah, the AMD ATI route rather than the uh, rather than the Intel Nvidia route. Right. Which I'm like over here is like. <laughs> <laughs> they they both have their pros and cons. I definitely. It's really a matter of preference, I think. Yeah. Excuse me. <laughs> it's making noises again. I personally am an, am an uh, AMD fan. You're you're an Nvidia fan, so. I mean, this thing here, right here. Look, 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 look what I got on my on my laptop right here in front. of Nvidia, Nvidia and Intel. What do you my, got inside? Mine that? has an AMD and ATI. Poof, poof. <laughs> <laughs> poof, poof. Mine has an AMD. I don't know what kind of graphics card in it, but. Yeah. It's crappy. I I mean this I, thing this thing cost me like three no it was like three hundred dollars. This one cost me like fifteen hundred dollars. Yeah, but mine can run WoW without dying. So can mine. Barely. I can full screen it now with the upgraded RAM. <laughs> I used to have two gigs I of RAM. I can now play I have, games in full screen. I used to have two gigs of RAM. Now I have six, and I can run WoW in full screen. Six full screen. I like that dance you did. Now I have six, and I can do full screen. But yeah, six. I don't really care about this thing. I can honestly throw it out the window, and I really wouldn't care. I would. I think it's better than Derp Top. Yeah, it is. We, we have Derp Top. I, I, I bring still it, works. I'd bring it out for you guys on the video, but uh, we, we have a laptop that uh, it's been through heck. I had I, I got it back in, like, 2006. Um, Five, probably. No, six. Oh. Uh, sure. I remember. Actually, no, it was... It was eight. 2008. I know for sure. It's fine. Five years ago. Yeah. So uh, I got... It's only five years old. <laughs> so I got Derp Top, and uh, it's this laptop. It, it was it was reasonably powerful for the time. It had Vista when I first got it. It was around that time era. Um, I kind of... I, I cared for that thing, but I didn't care for it. Yeah. Um, over time, like, keys started to pop off. Got, I, I could never find them again. Uh, so there's, like, keys missing on, like, F12. Please stop. Sorry. Um, Shrumming. And... Over time, I would like, just like it, it got it got battered. We it, it is now screenless. It has no screen anymore. The screen stopped working completely. Steph was doing the cinnamon challenge at uh, Zelothon Quest, and she sneezed cinnamon all over the laptop. There's still uh. cinnamon encrusted inside the keys. I'm not even kidding. We could get it out right now. <laughs> shake it and have cinnamon. <laughs> <laughs> oh man. So that poor laptop, but uh, it was my first laptop. I later yeah. got this laptop. This was my second laptop, and I've had to have it repaired once because the uh, stupid the cable. power the power stopped working on it, and I like that. And I've had two two main um, computers. Uh-huh. I've had the one that's upstairs right now. It's a uh, it's an HP. I I bought it before I that I, I'm using. I bought it before I like um, was into building computers, and it's a powerful system. It is. Uh, it's it's more powerful than mine. It has eight gigs of RAM. Actually, twelve gigs. Twelve gigabytes of RAM. See, I only have six in mine. In mm-hmm. my rate. that's that's the main difference I've seen between the two. And has an i seven, I believe nine sixty k, or not not or not wouldn't be a k nine nine sixty or something. It, it oh, was yeah. it was before they they went into the the Sandy and Ivy Bridge ones. Right. I got a Sandy Bridge i seven twenty six hundred k. If you guys don't know computer terms, I'm so sorry, but I love. <laughs> I love computers. So I, I, I need to get a new motherboard, and I'm. When I get a new motherboard, I think I might get a new case. Mm-hmm. At least a new power source, because that least. poor thing. I, I literally spent like forty dollars on my power source. That's probably why I fried. Yeah, because the power source is just strong enough to do what I need it to. I mean, that's what it's. And it's about crying me. the whole time. Like it literally sounds like a jet engine when I turn on my rig. <laughs> just because of the, the, it's the power source fan is mm-hmm. is why. Because it, it's just like ah. And it's like that the whole time it's on. 
We need to move on. Yeah. Let's talk about what we've been watching. On the tubes. On the tubes. So I've been watching some interesting things. Mm-hmm. Um, on the on the, the Netflix front, I have finished Monk. I have, like, I didn't know what to do with my life after that. <laughs> I couldn't watch that 70s show again. No. Um, so I decided to watch My Name is Earl, which is a show I used to watch a long time ago. And because uh, it was always on before The Office. Right. So I'd, I'd, I'd catch that before I watched The Office. And so I got into it, and like I'm up to the point where I didn't even see the show back then, so this is new. Yeah. New Earl, and that's like really cool for me. Um, it's a good show. It's a good show, and I, I really like it. It's actually a lot more funny than I remember it being. Mm. Um, it was a lot more adult. There's adult humor. Right, that you right. You probably didn't catch when you were younger. Right. And I'm also, because of your guys' suggestion, you guys were like, you liked Monk, you should watch Psych. And I, I remember seeing it a few times before Monk, back Kind of like the My Name is Earl type thing. Yeah. But I didn't like it. Like, right. I remember liking My Name is Earl before The Office, but I didn't remember liking Psych. I thought it was like, really boring and bad. And it's actually really good. It's really funny. So I'm really enjoying Psych. And there's a lot of seasons of it, so it's all new content for me. Uh, but on the YouTube, I've been watching this guy. Like, I, I, I'm, I used his music for the Yoshi's Island uh, bonus like uh, bonus challenge thing, like Goal and Score, it's what it's called, for mm-hmm. my live streaming show. He plays the accordion. His name is Jackson Parody. Um, I'll, I'll put a link to him inside the show notes. Accordion. And he plays the accordion, but he, like, the thing that I really, really like about, not only, not only is the accordion, like, really good, like, he's really good at playing the music, he puts out, like, five videos a day. Like, he, like, how does he learn the songs this fast? Accordion. It's so crazy, though, man. He plays the accordion. It's so good, though. He plays Zelda songs, he uh, plays, he played the Sherlock theme today. Nice. It's, like, just... Amazing, this guy. New Sherlock this this uh, winter. Season three. What are you doing? Like the Donkey Kong? No, boom, I, I boom, wanted to hit, boom, and then I realized boom, I had my lap. I was going to go, and then I realized, oh, wait, my laptop's here. I don't want to break it. So, check out Jackson Parody. I've been really enjoying his accordion music. You, you'll find something you like on there. Accordion. You kind of can't watch it for too long. He's like, like doing a burst, but it's so good every time. Accordion. Um... I've also watched Mario Marathon, which is a, uh, it's very similar to Zelthon. They play video games for charity. Um, they raise for money for child's play. They are arguably the second largest marathon. Uh, I'd say, like, Zelthon's actually probably, like, number four. Um, because ahead of us, we have, like, Desert Bus is number one. Yeah. Uh, the De- Desert Bus has been doing it longer than everybody. They, they know what they're doing. Uh, Mario Marathon is also really big, as well as the Speed Gamers. Mm-hmm. Um, are we number f- yeah, and then then Zelda-thon. in terms of like really popular marathons. Top five. Uh, overall, that's how I'd rank us in terms of like how much we've been able to raise. Um, We're creeping up there. Like yeah, I was actually really shocked because I was watching Mario Marathon, and most of the time their their viewer total was less than two thousand. And I was like, there are times where we get more than that. I'm like, yeah, we we usually hover at like four. Yeah, like four thousand. Four or five. Yeah, it's kind of insane to think that uh, there there are. They were creeping up on the popularity of Mario Marathon. Like they ended up with less than a hundred thousand well, dollars. If you think about it, your streams alone, you have. I get a thousand sometimes. Yeah. Right. It's insane to think that the, that the popularity of Zeldathon is actually getting to the point where we're competing with Mario Marathon because this is a marathon that I personally really enjoy. Yeah. Um, there, there's lots of really funny guys on there. They're all inside the like their thirties. Yeah. Which shows us that Zeldathon can continue for we're all in at our least late a decade. Teens and twenties. Right. Yeah. I, I see this, like Zeldathon being able to continue for at least. 10, 20 years even. It's crazy. Um, we will break the million dollars. Oh, that's easy. Yeah. Uh, <laughs> uh, I honestly think that we're going to be able to break the Mario Marathon total uh, very soon. Oh, yeah. Like, if not this marathon, like we'll be able to best them by our winter marathon. I, I don't want some pompous pompous, but you know how it is. It's like, we're just, it's amazing to see how much growth there is. And thank you guys for watching and coming. <laughs> What have you been watching? Uh, Scrubs. And more Scrubs! And, yeah, mostly that's pretty much all I've been watching on Netflix. You've been busy. Yeah. And then Little Shop of Horrors. Little Shop, Little Shop, Little Shop of Horrors. Copyright. Oh, yeah. <laughs> nice. But, yeah, it's... Um, I had completely forgotten about Little Shop of Horrors until Mike... What to go to the dentist and posted in the one Skype chat the dentist scene from Little Shop of Horrors. Uh, and I was really? like, oh my god, this musical is one of my favorites. I haven't watched it in years. So I watched it like four times in a row that day. 
I was wondering why I was going up there every time, like, during the day, and you were still watching, like, around the yeah, same part. I was I, like, what are you doing, pausing it for every ten minutes? No. <laughs> I would just keep watching it. That's pretty crazy. Yeah. I, I really like Little Shop Horrors. I remember when we watched it inside uh, Mrs. Duncan's... Uh, Duncanator. Uh, the, the, the theater class. Mm. We, we, we I also we, remember watching Into the Woods. We also did a full read-through at Little Shop Horrors, didn't we? Yes. Mm-hmm. I played the plant. Did you? I don't remember that. I was the player. I only got a big part. Because I, I tried to do, like, a big, like, boomy bass voice, and I couldn't really pull it off, because I was... Feed me, Seymour! Feed me, Seymour! Feed me all night long. Yes, it sounds like... Is that, is that all you watch, then? Pretty much. Wow, what, what a boring life you lead. In the, the I past mean, just two ver- months. various YouTube videos. Yeah, but, yeah, yeah, of course, of course. Yeah. You, you've been listening to a lot of, like... A lot of music. Uh, oh, yeah. Go lots ahead. and lots of music. Uh, one of my favorite bands released a new album. The band Scale the Summit released a new album called The Great Migration. He's hiding. Instrumental uh, progressive music that I listened to the album four or five times in a row, just laying on my bed with my eyes closed. It's amazing. Snore noise. It's so good. Snore and lately noise. I've been listening to the Last of Us soundtrack. On Snore Noise? The soundtrack is very, very good. I was uh, listening to it all this morning. I haven't I, listened to it at all because I don't want to, like... There's potential spoilers inside the... The song soundtrack? Title, the song, inside the song titles. No. Well, still. Not from what I've noticed. <sighs> what have you been playing, Alex? What have you been playing? World of Warcraft! <laughs> um, and a, a game I actually found through Reddit called Trackmania. What's that? Picture Hot Wheels, but on a giant scale. And do you remember, like, Lion Rider? Yeah. 3D. I, I, I don't know how to, like, picture that, because with Lion Rider, you don't press any buttons usually, right? Well, this, uh, you... Or wasn't there either. two? Wasn't there, like, Free Rider and Lion Rider yeah, back in the day? Yeah, same I... thing. Free Rider, you controlled. Lion Rider, you didn't. Right. Lion Rider was all gravity-based. Right. Um, yeah, but it's, it's literally, like, people make... Tra- I mean, there are tracks in the game, but most of the time I play on online. So you drive a car. Yeah, you drive a car and you use forward, left, right, and backward, and maybe space bar if you want a handbrake. That's it? Uh-huh. And then if you mess up, you hit delete, and you respawn at the beginning. Oh, that's neat. Like, it's just like an instant respawn, and then you go. And it's all timed. There's a huge ranking system. Like, the, the, the ladder I'm in, I'm ranked, I think, as of this morning, I'm 73rd in Pennsylvania. Um, I'm trying to think what I am in North America and in the U.S. It's in, like, the top 2,000 out of, like, 30,000. Mm-hmm. So I'm actually decent at this game. That's not bad. I'm pretty excited to, like, hear that you're, like... I found a game I'm actually good at. But it's frustrating because the tier I play in, everyone's really good. Like, if you mess up once, your run is over. You have to restart the whole track. And the, the, some of the tracks are just ridiculous. Like, what are you doing? Um, email. Well, I realized that we have to do the um. A poll. We we have to do our our what's it called section. Uh, our viewer submissions, and I haven't like checked that. We're, we're not. We're almost there. Yeah. Oops. Uh, oops. I, I've also been playing a uh, Grand Theft Auto Four. Somebody gifted to me on gifted it and um Stories from Liberty City on Steam the the DLC mm. just gifted to me. What um, game was that? Sorry, I missed Grand that. Theft Auto 4. Okay. And the DLC um, li- uh, episodes from Liberty City. I haven't gotten to the DLC yet because I actually have come to a standstill in the game storyline because I downloaded the Iron Man f- mod mm-hmm. for Grand Theft Auto 4. And it's so much fun. <laughs> it took me like two tries to do it because I did it wrong the first time and had to just do a fresh install. And I'm Iron Man. There's no other way to describe it. I'm, I am Iron Man. It has it's been so awesome. Confirmed. But yeah, that's pretty much what I've been playing. That's that's pretty fun. Yeah, I wish I could play Grand Theft Auto, but I don't. What have you been playing? I was waiting for that. <laughs> I was just sitting here going, "He's, he's, he's going to say it eventually." He's waiting for me to say something. But yeah, I don't remember what. I've been playing Animal Crossing New Leaf. I got that for the 3DS. Wow, I forgot something obvious inside my list. Sorry. Um, 
I'm playing Animal Crossing New Leaf. I got that for the 3DS. Uh, it was funny how I did, got it, because uh, I wasn't planning on buying it immediately, like on launch day. Mm -hmm. But then I was racing Choco on... Um, Thinking, 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 thinking. You just signed me out of the email. <laughs> um, <laughs> so I was playing... Uh, I was playing... Um, Wind Waker? The Animal Waker. Cro No, yeah, the Wind Waker. I was, I was racing chalk with the Wind Waker. I'm sorry, um, I need to go get something to eat soon. Um, <laughs> His blood sugar's low. Uh, I was playing the Wind Waker HD... I was <laughs> he was playing the Wind Waker, racing Chaco. When all of a sudden he was mentioning how Animal Crossing came out that night, and so he started to go to the eShop to buy it because it was almost midnight, and I was like, I want to do that too! And so I got out my 3DS, and like, we're here racing the game, and in the middle of the cutscenes, we're here going on the Nintendo eShop, buying Animal Crossing together, and I, I didn't think, I, I was like, man, this is a bad purchase, I'm not going to have any time with this, and I've been playing it every single day. I need to get a 3DS. The last handheld system I had was a Game Boy Advance. Yeah, you need to upgrade. I don't have monies. I've also been playing The Last of Us. I won't spoil anything for you guys, but the... I, I'm not going to say any spoilers, but I will say this. It is probably one of the best games I've... Like, best made and best designed games I've ever seen. It's very good. There, there are a few things that I have mini problems with, but I don't want to talk there, about There them. are always little mechanics and everything. Though. Right, right. But the, the overall acting in the game, the voice acting, all I'm just the wondering, detail in the Right game, now I'm wondering how long it can go on, because I've been putting in, like, Two to three hours every night mm -hmm. for the past like four days, I'd say. Yeah. Four to five days, and I'm still not done. It's the, yeah. I, I feel like we're getting to the point where we're almost at a climax, but uh, we'll see. I suppose. Yeah. I mean, because nowadays games are shorter. They're like so so good. There were times like around the N64 to GameCube era where games were like at least fifty hours. Yeah. Um, well, if you think about it, if you can think of like the the PS1 and PS2, all the Final Fantasy games. Right. Final Fantasy IX took me seventy three or four hours to beat. And Legend I, of Dragoon took me eighty hours. It was a three disc game. Right. And Final I, Fantasy IX was four discs. The like, thing the thing as I'm concerned about is like we're, we're inside the age now of gaming where uh, like with Portal Two, like that was a full feature game, and I really enjoy Portal Two. I, I beat it in two hours. Not two hours, like like more like four. Not recently, I beat it in two hours. Well, okay, but it's like, it's like, it's like a four-hour game, and like that, that that's still pretty good for what it was. Oh, like, yeah. It took like so much time. It was so. a good game, though. So games are shorter now, but they're more well-polished. Right. All right. Uh, so if if you have a PS3 and you don't have this game, get save up the lessons. money and yeah. get it. It's you will totally not regret it. It's completely worth it. Ugh. I'm not. I, I'm, I convinced my vocalist to get it, and he 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 made a Facebook post saying it's like a naughty dog was like it was just Bravo like. He's like, it's one of the best games I've ever played. Just everything in it was amazing. The thing that's crazy about it is I am not a fan of shooting games. No. Uh, but but it's so brutal. I can get behind this. It's so I can get brutal. behind this game. It's really realistic. Like, you just just play it. I if, if you can't play it, at least watch a less play of it. Sorry. It's okay. I'm, I'm advertising this game because I love it so much. I've and also... I have yet to play it. I'm going to keep interrupting you. You know this, right? I've also been playing <laughs> The Wind Waker... Yoshi's Island and Zelda's Adventure. Zelda's Adventure. So now for some viewer submissions. If you want to submit something to us, you can email us at temporarypodcast at gmail.com. And uh, let me see if I'm signed out. Again? It signed me out. It keeps signing me out. Uh, so let me go and see if I can find some stuff for you because I didn't pre-plan it because I'm, I'm a genius. Hey, we haven't How, When's the last time we checked the Gmail? Uh, April 27th. Two months ago. Mm -hmm. <laughs> okay, hi, my name is Donald, a.k.a. Beyond Human, a.k.a. Dolphin Man. No idea. Apparently he's beyond the human, he's a dolphin. Alex, you Zarkin Frood, do you know where your towel is? I do! Oh my god. Where is it? It is up, actually, on my closet. On my closet door. Good, very good. Will hey. you join me in a Pan Galactic Gorgo Blaster later? Answer via comments. MC, I have been enjoying your videos since episode 6 of your Mind Crack series. My question for you is, when are you going to continue working on that Wind Waker build? Never. <laughs> also, MC, you may not know what Magic the Gathering is, but you can appreciate this card. And it looks to be a Lapis Lazuli card. Nice. I've never played Magic, and I don't know. I don't understand it. We play Yu-Gi-Oh!, which we need to get back into. To Apple Pie, I'm not answering your dumb question. On a scale from 1 to 10, what's your favorite color of the alphabet? 
No. Broccoli. There's, there's no such thing as a stupid question except that one. It is I, Matthew the Brony. I tried to get a video question, but I couldn't. Sorry, I have another question. If you could be any video game character, keep in mind MC if you choose Link, I you I you die, you're dead. Who would it be? And by the way, Blaze Blue is pronounced Blaze Blue. So Blaze Blue. Okay. Any video game character. Oof. I would say Mega Man, but I don't want to be a, a quad amputee turned into a robot. That would not be cool. Yeah, Mega Man's actually really morbid. He he doesn't have arms or legs. He's a quad amputee. I don't know what what kind of game character but, I'd like to be. I I'd probably want to be. Can't think of anybody that I really want to be in a video game. Because these video game worlds are pretty bad. And I sad. know, like. I'm I mean, like, to, <laughs> what I would actually want to. I mean, the close, like, like you'd be in danger, but I'd want to be like a Koopa inside the Mario Brothers because then I get to like walk around and go bop 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 whenever whenever the music makes notes. It'd be fun dancing all over the place, dancing. I, I would want to be someone in the Battle Network series because it's not that dangerous. You just your risk of your PDA getting destroyed <laughs> with your with good. your with your digital personality friend. I'm trying to have a really good being answer. able to jack into the internet and walk around like <laughs> it's a cool concept. I would like I, I'd be interested in doing something like that. All right, we'll answer one more question from you guys, and I'll, I'll clean out the email box, and we'll be all good for the next episode. Um, hi, MC. Now, Alex, I got a question for you. So I'm pretty sure you guys know that you can transfer your Wii down and stuff to your Wii U. We uh, did that. Yeah. However, I like to play certain games on my GameCube controller, such as Super Smash Bros. Brawl, Mario Kart Wii, etc. Do you guys know of any connector I can buy to connect my GameCube to my Wii U or something like that? Or do you guys recommend using two SD cards to back up my Wii twice and put one on my Wii U and then reload one back onto my Wii? Or do you guys recommend I just keep things on my Wii and make my Wii U only for Wii U games? I would recommend using the Wii U Classic Controller Pro. It is a lot like a GameCube controller. You can't use that for Wii games. The Classic Controller? Or not, no, the Classic Controller Pro. Oh, the Classic Controller Pro, yes. Uh, not the Wii U. The Wii Classic Controller Pro. Right. I would recommend, because it's got the same feel as the GameCube controller, in my opinion. Because I started using it because you can't use the GameCube controller for Brawl. Right. So, or not Brawl, but... Correct. Well, on the Wii U, you can't use Correct. GameCube. So I, I started using that. The only, my only issue is the B and A button are slightly, like, everything's turned. Like right. Like, the buttons are on a 90 degree rotation. Other than that, I don't think I could go back to a GameCube controller like that easily. I'm so used to the Wii U, or the Wii Pro controller. I'll finish reading the email now. Sorry. <laughs> It'd be great if you answer this. And yes, I know that I asked like three questions, but I think you guys are experienced gamers and know what you're talking about. Can't reply. It would be great. Thanks, Sour Man B. P.S. Legend of Link has become my favorite movie of all time. And <laughs> smiley face. You're welcome. Um, and they actually do make connectors for GameCube controllers. Oh, do they? Yeah. I did not know that. Um, by, by they, I mean shady, shady internet sources. Do some Googling. That's the best advice. If, I if give you don't that. want to risk breaking anything, get a Wii U Pro, Wii Pro controller. Why do I keep saying Wii U Pro? We Pro Control Pro Classic Controller Pro. Blah, 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 blah. It's basically a classic controller like on the Wii, but it's got like hand grips similar to a GameCube controller. Actually, do we have one over there? What? 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 Oh, uh, I I'm reading a spam email. Oh, I I want to read. Don't don't clear it out. I want to read all these in a bit. All the emails. Okay. Okay, but yeah. I, 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 we have spam email for, for on the, our website. The next time I read a weblog, I hope that it doesn't disappoint me as considerably as this one. I mean, I know it was my choice to read, but I essentially thought you'd have something fascinating to say. All I hear is uh, often a bunch of whining about something that you could could fix if you weren't too busy seeking for attention. URL, michaelcoarscheatbags.com. <laughs> Usually, when they like, they have a spam message. They usually like compliment your web log, your 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 blog. Different tactic. Yeah, this time they're insulting us. But yeah. and, and but and the funny thing is because they're, they're insulting us because of our text. We don't have text. We we do <laughs> podcast. So yeah, that's how I know it's spam. It's like just like what is the heck? I, I hope that guy responds. That'd be great. But we'll we'll cover more questions on our next episode. We're already yeah. starting to keep on running on now. Other than the bread. And you can again submit anything to us. Art. Audio, video questions, text questions. We can't accept everything, but we'll, we'll put on what we can. Yeah. At um, temporarypodcast at gmail.com. Very good. Yeah. So we had a weekly poll. Uh, <laughs> Two months ago. I mean, a bi-monthly poll. 
And we asked you guys, what would be more, what would you be more likely, would you be more likely to subscribe to an MMO if it was purchasable through Steam? Alex, can you give us a rundown of the stats? Um, there were a total of 92 votes, uh, a resigning 52, or 53 votes, which is about 57%. Right. Said, um, it would not change my decision at all. Interesting. So, they were saying, you know, if it comes to Steam, uh, MMO purchasable through Steam, they were like, nah, wouldn't really change my decision. Um... 24 votes, which is 26%, said uh, it's unlikely, but it's possible. So maybe, so say if it's a po- more popular MMO or something they were interested in, it's a possibility. Right. And then 15 votes, which is 16%, said more likely to purchase a game. So if it's on Steam, I would probably do it. It's a really low percentage that, that people would actually be more likely to buy it. Um, I thought that percentage was actually going to be the one to one, to be honest. Eh. Because I personally, because... For me, Steam is a very convenient system. I, I know how to use it. And if if I, like, saw Rift or something, like, if Rift was still purchasable, that is. The Rift is free to play. Yeah. Uh, if, if Rift was on Steam and, like, they were charging, like, five bucks a month or something through Steam, I'd be a lot more likely to, to buy it through there than... Uh, I know the secret rules through Steam, but it's free to play now, too. Right. Which I want to get because I never... I played the beta and I loved it. It was so much hype for that game, but anyway... Yeah, I, 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 I personally, would you be more likely to, to buy a game if it was on Steam rather than through their own website? It would, I, I'd probably buy it through Steam, but it really wouldn't change my mind. Okay, fair enough, fair I enough. I mean, I'm already buying it through the, the website. Um, right, I'll right. probably just transfer it through Steam because... Steam. Because Battle.net's annoying. Right. You have to log in like four times to do anything. <laughs> there's, a, there's a button that says save my password or save my login info. That is a complete total lie. Sorry, I'm ranting. We have another poll for you this week. Yeah! What systems are you going to be gaming on in the next gen, based on current impressions? So, uh, you'll be able to check as many systems as you want, uh, mobile devices and stuff like that, and we're going we're gonna to get the rundown next next uh, podcast. Uh, I don't want to say next week, because we're, we're, we're nuts, so. Uh, but I, th- I, I, I think, I think we, have, did it, we covered everything. We covered everything? Good enough. All right, thank you all for watching. Uh, this has been, it's been, a, I'm happy to get back to the podcast. Yeah, it was a little rusty getting started. Yeah, we're, we're a little rusty, sorry about yeah. that. We'll get, we'll get back into it uh, again this July, we'll have a couple podcasts. Yeah. Um, but in the meantime, make sure you guys comment. Yeah, um, vote on our weekly poll. The, that we just talked about, what, what, what next-gen systems are you going to be gaming on? Yeah. Oh, uh, oh, never mind. I thought you were asking me, but... Oh, no, 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 no. <laughs> we'll talk about that next time, yeah. even though you probably already understand. Um... You can you remember you can uh, subscribe to this podcast on iTunes or via RSS, <laughs> and uh, make sure you guys check out Zelda Phone Live starting July fifth, four p.m. EST, EDT, your EDT at zeldathon.net. We'll be playing games for five days, raising money for the National Foundation for Transplants. You'll see him play Majora's Mask. You'll see me play The Wind Waker and Zelda's Adventure. And I'm going to have my kidney removed. Wait, oh. no. Did we decide on that? What? During the marathon, I'm giving them a kidney, right? You've never mentioned that to me. Okay, so the kidney's not a, a kidney's no go, but <laughs> it was an idea. It um, was. A, I'm just like, at first I didn't even understand, then I was just transplants. Transplants. I mean, they could have had a free kidney, but no. MC's a jerk. But I think that's all the time we have for. We'll see you guys next time on the, the Temporary, Temporary Podcast. Bye-bye. Bye. Bye.